Um, hello and welcome to Join the Club today. Um, we come back after a short, short interlude. So um, today we'll be discussing about the Colcott trial. So I'll pass you on to, to Jay and Stephanie who will be discussing that today. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so the topic for today's Journal Cup presentation is the Colcott trial. So there's renewed interest in colchicine because it has been used in the recovery trial for COVID. So we'll, we'll start at how this all started. Uh, this, this is the trial from December 2019. This is a publication from the New England Journal of Medicine, where the original article says that they wanted to see the efficacy and safety of a low dose colchicine after myocardial infarction. So it was held over a period of uh, three years from 2015 December to up to August 2018. So they published it last year, it was in December 2019. And this is the original article for the efficacy and safety of the low dose colchicine after my. So to start off with, uh, there were experimental and clinical evidences where, which supported the role of inflammation uh, in atherosclerosis and its complications. That's why uh, there were three different trials which were held. Uh, so we'll start with those trials. The first is the CANTOS trial. So the CANTOS is the Kanaki new map anti-inflammatory thrombosis of a large cardiovascular outcomes trial to demonstrate cardiovascular events. So it started, uh, there was treatment with the interleukin 1B inhibitor, Kanaki Numab, which resulted in a 15% overall lower risk of cardiovascular events when compared to placebo in individuals who had established uh, atherosclerotic heart diseases. Uh, the limitation for the uptake of canalicumab was that uh, it had a higher incidence of severe infections. And this can be, of course, related to the uh, potent immunosuppressive activity of this drug. So after that, there was another trial, which was uh, quite recent again, which was the cardiovascular inflammation reduction trial, which was the CURD trial, where the, it showed that there's no detectable benefit with the weaker immune modulator, which is methotrexate. So the plan was uh, to get something in between uh, a weak immune modulator like methotrexate and a very potent uh, uh, immune mo modulator like uh, canalicumab. So the, the objective of this study was for the identification of an effective uh, immunosuppressant with a safer adverse effect profile with the potential to reduce uh, the cardiovascular events, especially in individuals with residual inflammatory risk and it presented an, a major unmet need. So coming to the, before the call court trial, uh, there was already a load of trial which was held, which was a low-dose colchicine trial where patients with stable coronary disease, this low-dose trial was that it was only uh, its acute medicine. So we, uh, we had to which, uh, which, which were of a acute myocardial infarction. And in the Lodoco trial, uh, the trial only enrolled around 532 patients and there was no placebo control. Uh, so because, as I mentioned, can, can everyone hear me? Yeah, it's, it seems to be working yeah. now. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so because acute coronary syndromes are associated with a higher risks of recurrent events and exacerbated inflammation, the Colcott trial was conducted to evaluate the effects of colchicine uh, on cardiovascular outcomes, as well as the most important thing is the long-term, the long-term safety profile in patients who have had a recent myocardial infarction. So just to go through what 
what drug colchicine is. Uh, so it is an inexpensive, orally administered, a potent anti-inflammatory medication, which, which has been used for a variety of indications uh, like gouty arthritis, familial Mediterranean fever, and pericarditis as well. And we also know that the adverse effect profile of colchicine is actually very well understood with only gastrointestinal symptoms, mainly diarrhea, representing its major side effect. Uh, the results from a small uncontrolled trial of colchicine in individuals with stable coronary disease, which was Lodoco trial, it suggested a possible benefit for reducing these uh, cardiovascular events. But because these events, they, they merited a confirmation with a larger randomized controlled trial. So coming to the objective of this Colcord trial, it was to study uh, whether colchicine reduces the risk of recurrent cardiovascular events in patients with myocardial infarction only in the last 90 days. And the second part of the trial was for its cost effectiveness. So it wanted to see whether within the 90 days post MI, uh, what, is the, what is the advantage of colchicine for preventing the recurrence of these attacks. Coming to the trial design, basically it is a multi-center, double-blind and randomized controlled trial where up to 4,745 patients uh, participated. And from those, uh, 2,336 patients received colchicine 0.5 milligrams daily by the oral or the nasogastric route. And the placebo group control at around 2,379 patients. Uh, as mentioned, this, en this enrollment was done from December 2015 to August 2018, and it spread across 167 uh, different sites in 12 countries, which included acute intensive care setups and heart centers. And the median follow-up period was just about 22 months, and the analysis for this trial was with the intention to treat the repeat or recurrent inflammatory attacks which occurred after the uh, initial attack of the myocardial infarction. So as we can see, out of the 4,745 patients which underwent randomization, about 2,366 2, were assigned to receive colchicine, while uh, the other side is 2,379 which received the placebo. Out of the 2,366 which received colchicine, uh, 2,226 completed the trial and 140 could not due to various reasons like they withdrew consent, they were lost to follow up, some died and some uh, discontinued the colchicine and visits. So out of that, the survival status at the end of the colchicine trial was around 2,309 which were alive and 44 had died while 13 had unknown survival status. Well, on the other hand, 2,232 completed the trial with the placebo, out of which uh, the survival status was 2,325, which were alive and 44 had died. Looking at the baseline characteristics between the two different groups, so uh, the age, the mean age was around 60.6 uh, for the colchicine trial and the placebo was 60.5. Uh, so around 472 females uh, were given the colchicine trial, whereas 437 received the placebo group. Similarly, the different criteria included white race, the body mass index, and uh, different comorbidities, which included hypertension, diabetes, and if they were current smokers as well. Coming to the histories, uh, there were history of myocardial infarction, history of uh, percutaneous interventions, history of patients who've undergone uh, coronary artery bypass grafting, and history of heart failure with stroke. Most of these patients did, were, of course, on antiplatelets like aspirin, they received statins and beta blockers. So the, this is the baseline characteristics of the patients which were involved, which got colchicine and the other group which had just the placebo. Coming to the different criteria, uh, first we'll go through the inclusion criteria. Uh, the trial involved patients who were above or uh, 18 years of age. 
they had documented acute myocardial infarction within the last 30 days and they were treated after that infarction according to the national guidelines which include antiplatelet therapy renin angiotensin aldosterone inhibitors some statins beta blockers as and when indicated and uh, patients who had completed any planned percutaneous revascularization for index mi and not those who were awaiting coronary artery bypass grafting or, or who were awaiting the percutaneous interventions females included should be uh, either not of childbearing potential or or on uh, any durable contraception and they were judged to be in good general health by the principal investigator and the patient should be willing uh, and able to comply with the study protocol for the exclusion criteria uh, those patients who were poorly controlled like those with uh, New York Heart uh, NYHA classification three or four with severe breathlessness on rest, uh, left ventricular ejection fractions less than thirty five percent, and stroke uh, within the last three months were not uh, being made to participate because that would pose an undue risk to them. Uh, as mentioned, any patients with prior coronary artery bypass grafts in the last three years or who are planned to get a cabbage done, they were not involved in the study as well. Patients having cardiogenic shock or hemodynamic instability, history of cancer or lymphoproliferative diseases, again, within the past three years, were not involved in the study. Inflammatory bowel disease or patients with chronic diarrhea and uh, patients with progressive neuromuscular disease or CPK level greater than three times the upper limit of normal which were not involved. Some more of the exclusion criteria involved hepatic and renal uh, renal injuries as well, like uh, acute kidney injury, transammonitis, bilirubin elevation, uh, decreased platelet count thrombocytopenia, cirrhosis, chronic active hepatitis, or severe hepatic disease. Pregnant females, breastfeeding females, or those who were planning to become pregnant were not involved. Clinical significant drug or alcohol abuse, patients on chronic systemic steroids, or patients taking Colchicine for a chronic condition were not involved in the trial. And obviously those with history of allergy or sensitivity to colchicine were not involved in the trial and was considered by the investigator to be inappropriate for the study of for any other reason. So coming to the trial or study per se, uh, the patients were randomized one is to one to colchicine 0.5 milligram daily or placebo. And the randomization, as we discussed, was within 30 days of the acute index uh, myocardial infarction. Uh, so this, these clinical evaluations occurred every at one month first and every three months later on after the randomization up to a period of two years. So potential trial endpoint events were adjudicated by an independent clinical endpoint committee, uh, which comprised of different uh, neurologists and cardiologists, which were blinded to study group appointments. So uh, now Stephanie will take over and she'll tell you about the primary and the secondary outcomes and give you an overview of the conclusions and what are the limitations of this study and what uh, criticism we can draw from this study. Over to you, Stephanie. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, can everyone hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Um, so yes, primary we can. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So primary outcome of this study, um, so obviously it's a comparison of colchicine versus the placebo. Um, primary outcome with death, death from cardiovascular causes, resuscitated cardiac arrest, MI, stroke, or urgent ho hospitalization for angina, which led to needing revascularization. Um, so the main outcome here, you can see that it's um, 131 versus 170, um, with the hazard ratio being 0.77, meaning that the um, our group, the colchicine takers, are, point, are 77 times as likely to have an event than a placebo, basically meaning they are 23% less likely to have an event. Um, so the secondary outcomes of the study, um, any death from cardiovascular causes, and you can see the figures for those, uh, myocardial infarction and stroke, we've already mentioned, they're separate figures there, um, stroke being a particularly low one. Urgent hospitalization for angina, leading to any revascularization needed, hazard ratio of 0.5, um, all cause death, and atrial fibrillation. 
So this just um, has it all in a table for you, just in case this is easier for people to see. But obviously the ones in red are the ones that are the ones that I've just discussed. Um, there is also um, DBT and P at the bottom there. So um, adverse events, any related adverse event. Um, so that encompasses everything all together um, was um, 372 versus 371. So not much of a change there. Um, GI adverse event, which was our most common side effect for colchicine, in particular diarrhea. Um, so you can see diarrhea there is 225 versus 288 um, with a p value, which I think we probably use p values more than hazard ratios, p value of 0.35 there. Um, pneumonia, um, which is one of the most common side effects, uh, sorry, one of the rarer side effects, but one of the more serious rarer side effects um, is there at the bottom. So this is all of the adverse events here. Um, we haven't actually highlighted the ones that we talked about, but they're the ones at the top there. So any related adverse event is right at the top. Gastrointestinal event being the most common and diarrhea there, both at the top. Um, and then under serious adverse events, you can see pneumonia comes down number four on the table there. And that's with a p-value of 0.03. Um, but you also have other serious events. Um, for example, infection comes up with quite high numbers also. But the others are very, very rare, so we didn't really um, talk about those very much or bring those up. They weren't brought up as much in the study. So this is just a general overview of the trial. Actually, Jay's already talked about all of the writing on the, on the left there. So the main thing that I wanted to highlight was the graph up here on the right. Um, so right in the top corner there, you can see that colchicine um, is in the blue. The placebo is in the red dotted line there. Um, on the y-axis, you've got the cumulative incidence in percentage, and on the x-axis, you've got months, so months since the randomization in the trial. Um, so you can see that as you, as you go along in months on the x-axis, um, there are fewer events in the colchicine group than there are in the placebo group. But like I said, this is just sort of an overview of everything we've said. So randomization one-to-one, 0.5 milligrams per day, and the follow-up of two years. So, generalized overview, it was the first trial to provide strong evidence for the role of this anti-inflammatory agent to reduce recurrent risk, um, acute post-MI period, so within the 30 days. Um, colchicine was not only effective, but has a favorable side effect profile, because obviously, the, like I've said a few times, the most common was GI adverse event, which you get with a lot of the drugs that we give. Um, there were no, no other giant side effects for people. Um, future studies confirm these findings would be useful, but as colchicine has a long track record of safety, um, its use in the post MI setting is likely to increase substantially on the basis of this trial. So without having all the, these extra trials, even though they would be useful to back up the data. Okay. It's Sorry, froze there for a minute. So limitations of this trial. So the median follow-up was 23 months, so just under two years. Um, and it sort of doesn't really give us the ability to draw firm conclusions um, about long-term safety and efficacy. So two years is great, but we'd like a bit more on the long-term implications, five, 10, 20 years down the line. Um, there was also a small number of individuals that had their biomarker testing right at the beginning. So CRP, um, white cell count at baseline and then again at all the follow-up points so the one month the three months and the three months thereafter um, so as a result you can't actually confirm the mechanism of benefit of the colchicine because you haven't seen the re the confirmed reduction in inflammatory mediators from the data um, another limitation is that it only applies to the acute post mi period this this trial in particular um, and since there's no correction for multiple testing, um, the p-values were not reported for the non-primary outcome events. So things like um, the reduction in the stroke rate and some of the other ones lower down in the table um, are considered hypothesis generating. So we'd need more data and more studies on these. So in conclusion, in patients with myocardial infarction in the last 30 days, 
Colchicine at the dose of 0.5 milligrams daily was associated with a 1.6% absolute reduction in the primary composite endpoint of death from cardiovascular causes. So those being resuscitated cardiac arrest, recurrent MI, stroke or hospitalization for angina leading to revascularization. And that is based around the median of 22.6 months. So we rounded to 23 um, compared to our placebo group. So one of the side effects, actually, we should have put this before conclusion, but one of the side effects, actually, um, is the cost effectiveness of the trial. It isn't mentioned in the main point of the trial, but obviously it's something that we've all got to consider if it's going to be brought into practice. Um, so this just gives you a couple of instances where it has been brought into practice. So the Canadian healthcare system, um, the addition of the uh, low dose coltazine um, is standard care therapy after MI because it economically makes sense. Um, the patient costs, you can see, um, it's reduced by 47% for the trial period and 69% for the lifetime period of these patients. Um, and therefore, you're, incre you're also increasing the qualities. Um, for the US healthcare system, right at the bottom there, um, it was cost effective for the in-trial period and economically dominant at a price of less than $5 per pill, which I'm told is very cheap. So uh, that's sort of how we'd bring it into, uh, into practice here. Um, and that just gives you the information on who it's funded by. Um, so no intervention for any pharmacological companies. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now open up to questions, if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Um, please, if anyone's got any questions, can you just unmute yourself and ask? We've got about five minutes for questions. Try and get in. Just that Colchicine uh, for these uh, recovery trials since it's been started. So we just wanted to see the mechanism of action and in what different organ systems it can help us in, with what inflammatory mediators, how it can help with the COVID patients. So we thought that Colcord is something which uh, can be used nowadays uh, and just to know about the trial and the effects of Colchicine on different systems in the body. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, a, a question from me is: um, Do you think that this trial has a has a is an important trial, and how would you want to see um, this um, information used, and what further trials do you think they need to do um, with this data that they've that they've uh, published? Uh, so yeah, as we know that for the primary uh, uh, these uh, the for the PCIs, uh, percutaneous coronary interventions, uh, if we stop the uh, recurrence of the disease, and uh, so with colchicine, if it a low uh, safety profile with a very low uh, what do you call uh, side effects. So for patients all over the world, uh, for the especially for the cardiac centers and those patients in the intensive care setup, if uh, something which is so cost effective and which can be given easily once a day uh, with a low dose, 0.5 milligrams, it will stop the recurrent uh, side effect profile of after post MI. I think uh, it should be very very helpful. But of course, there needs to be more long term efficacy uh, studies for like the safety and efficacy because it's done only for 23 months. Uh, so we don't know what exactly it does for long-term effects, but both these trials, the LODOCO trial, which was for stable patients, stable coronary uh, disease patients and these ones. Uh, so they've, they're pointing in the right direction and we need more such trials to uh, confirm and just make it a guideline because there, there hasn't been any specific guideline in the cardiothoracic society as of now about colchicine, but they are looking into this to add it to one of their national guidelines as well. Um, hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to uh, point out something from the tables that you had presented before. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at uh, pneumonia, incidence of pneumonia and colchicine group versus the placebo. And yeah. I think the difference is significantly higher in colchicine, if I'm not wrong. 
the pneumonia uh, yeah uh, so basically Look at those the were the, yeah yeah so basically those were the more uh, common side effects uh, including the gastrointestinal uh, side effect and infection wise it was pneumonia uh, it was 21 patients uh, it, out of 2330 patients of course the, there are some patients who are in the acute intensive care mm -hmm. setup so we don't know what exactly uh, was colchicine the primary reason for that or uh, patients who were already immunosuppressed due to some yeah. other reasons pneumonia can be a, a side effect of that so we need to go through that in detail as well because there are patients nine patients out of the placebo group who got pneumonia as well mm. so uh, i think we need to go in detail about that as well yeah what do you yeah. think Steph? Yeah. yeah i agree there could be lots of other reasons for the pneumonia that didn't um, immediately exclude them from the trial. So, for example, if we're tubing them or something, we, yeah. could, have, we could have caused a problem. Yeah, make sense. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Has anyone else got any questions before we end the meeting? Uh, doesn't seem like it. Okay, thank you so much for the um, presentation, Jay and Stephanie. Um, so we will be taking a little break over Christmas and New Year, and we'll be returning with Journal Club in January. Okay, thank you everyone um, for attending, um, and then we'll see you after the holiday.